What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be going over the basics of programming a newly built drone in Betaflight. So if you just built an FPV drone like this one and are a little lost as far as getting it set up on your computer goes, this video is for you. So for this video, I'm using this T-Motor Velox, Velox, I don't know how you say it, um, F4 flight controller. I'm going to keep this setup as general as I can so you can use it for pretty much any flight controller that's running Betaflight. For this tutorial, make sure you have Betaflight 10.8 or above installed. And the way that you can tell which version you have is right up here in the corner. You can see Configurator and then the version right after. So 10.8. And the first thing you want to do is plug in your drone to the computer. Once it's selected up here, you can go Update Firmware. I'm going to hit auto detect. This is going to automatically detect what board I have plugged into the computer. This is a T-Motor F4, like I said. Select the version of the firmware that you want to install. 4.3, no reboot sequence, full chip erase on, and then you can load firmware online. And that's basically just going to download the firmware to your computer. You can read through all the changes. If it's an official release, I think you're probably good to just install it. And then hit flash firmware. So this is going to do its thing, and then we'll continue. All right, so once that's all set, we can go up to Connect, Apply Custom Defaults. Once it pops up here again, you can turn on Auto Connect. That's just going to make it a little easier while you're tuning, and just hit Connect. You're probably going to get a couple warnings here, like the motor output protocol and the accelerometer, but we're going to fix that right now. So hit Close. Betaflight thinks that my drone is upside down. So that's obviously not right. This flight controller is right side up. So we're gonna have to change some settings. Instead of selecting calibrate accelerometer right off the bat, I would recommend going under configuration and just taking a look at the board and sensor alignment tab and see if you have anything out of the ordinary like this uh, clockwise 180 degree flip. I'm not sure why I put that on the board, but I don't want that. So clockwise zero, save reboot. And now at least when it starts up, the drone should be right side up. So it looks like I still have to do a little bit of adjusting because it thinks that forward is right and left is forward and back is left. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of rotating. Since it thinks that the board is rotated like that, that's gonna be a 90 degree rotation. So to add a 90 degree rotation or a negative 90 degree rotation, I guess that would be, go back under configuration and board and sensor alignment where we just were. You're gonna have yaw degrees and this is basically just gonna rotate it 90 degrees that way. So I'm going to do negative 90. If you had the flight controller for some reason on its side, that's when you would adjust uh, pitch and roll. And I've never put a flight controller on its side. I don't know who's doing that, but if you did, you can adjust it here. So we have negative 90 on the yaw. So that should fix the rotation so that it knows that forward is forward, left is left, and we're good. There we go. So yeah, just make sure it rotates and looks good like that. Once it is looking like that, now you can go calibrate accelerometer. And that's basically just gonna tell the flight controller, this is flat. So make sure you have it on a flat surface before you do this. Next, what we'll wanna do is go under the ports tab, which is right underneath setup. And this is where you're gonna configure the receiver and the video transmitter. So the way I have this board set up, right up here we have the camera, right here is the video transmitter, and then right here is the receiver. So the receiver, the yellow and white wires are going to TX and RX2, so that's gonna correspond with UR2. The video transmitter, I have a blue wire going to TX1, and the yellow wire is actually just the video feed, so we only have uh, TX1 on here, so that's gonna correspond with UR1. There's no UR used for the camera, the yellow wire is just the video feed going from the camera into the board. So, when you go back over to Betaflight, UART1, like I said, is hooked up to our video transmitter, and this video transmitter that I'm using is using the IRC Tramp protocol. So I'm going to go over to Peripherals, click this drop-down menu, and select IRC Tramp. If your video transmitter is using Smart Audio, just select Smart Audio. I'm going to select Tramp. And like I said, the receiver is hooked up to TX and RX2, which is UART2. So serial RX, UR2, make sure this is turned on. If you have it hooked up to UR3, just make sure you do that on UR3. Hit save reboot and close. Now you can go to the configuration tab. 
system configuration. I don't usually change any of these settings. Personalization, you can name the drone. You have the camera tilt. Arming, I do change. So this is basically linked to the angle of the drone. So if your drone is sitting at an angle that's above 25 degrees, it won't arm. So I feel like 25 is a little low, so I'll usually change this to 45. Other features, I would just make sure that LED strip, air mode, and OSD are on. If you're using a servo, you can turn that on, but if this is your first build, I, I can't imagine you're putting servos on your drone. So I would just, I'm just gonna keep LED strip, air mode, and OSD on. If you have GPS hooked up to it, you can select that here. I'm not gonna go over that because that's pretty, that can get in depth and that's kind of for another video. We won't have to change any of these settings. We did that in the beginning. Don't change any of these. D-Shot beacon configuration. I'm gonna turn these on. This is basically when you have a switch mapped on your controller to beep the drone or beep the ESCs, they'll beep. And then we also have some other beeper configuration things here and I just keep these on. So once that's all selected, save reboot. And now what I'm gonna do before I go on to anything else is I'm gonna hop down to the video transmitter tab. Now, if you, this all depends on what video transmitter you have on your drone, because if you have something like the uh, Diatone Mamba Ultra VTX, you can select VTX and you can go under here and you see a bunch of uh, presets for certain VTXs. This VTX doesn't have a preset, and I think even if it did, I'd still want to show you this, this other method. Um, but you can select a preset for whatever VTX you have on your drone. So if this was say a Diatone Mamba Ultra, I could select this and I could hit pick and then it would automatically import the VTX tables to the video transmitter tab. And you can do this for a flight controller, you can do this for rates, you can do it for LEDs, modes. These are all the different options that you have that you can select a preset for. So I'm not gonna select any of these. I'm just gonna go down to the video transmitter tab and I'm gonna show you how to manually input the channels for your video transmitter. So since we have IRC Tramp set up on this wire, we're actually gonna be able to change all the settings through our controller. So what you're gonna do is go to this link right here, and you're gonna have all the VTX tables right here. So this video transmitter is running IRC Tramp, so I'm gonna click this. I'm gonna highlight everything. And I'm gonna copy, so you can see it, copy. Then I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna just click load from clipboard and it'll automatically populate all the channels right here. Double check these channels. These channels are actually right. Sometimes you'll have to change these. Like if your VTX only has four power levels, just change that to four and it'll eliminate this one and just make sure that the numbers all correspond with the actual values that your VTX is capable of. So now I'm gonna put this on the channel and band and power that I want. The main reason I like to set this up right now is because when we do the motor uh, mapping, we're gonna have to plug a battery in and I don't want this VTX heating up to the point where it gets way too hot. And since this VTX is capable of 600 milliwatts, I don't want this to be just sitting here at 600 milliwatts. So I'm gonna turn the power to 25. You could even just put it in pit mode if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna keep it on 25. Save. And now we can take a look at uh, Power and battery, you don't have to worry about anything on. Presets, we took a look at. Uh, PID tuning, this is basically, you only wanna play with this after you've flown it. If the motors are really hot, if it's flying like garbage, this is where you can kinda tune all those things out. And when you're tuning it, just make sure you kinda adjust these nice and slow because you don't wanna, you know, change it wicked drastically and then all of a sudden the drone's flying even worse or you're burning motors out or anything. So just kinda adjust these one click at a time, I would suggest. So off the bat, I would just keep these as is. Rate profile settings, this is ultimately where it's gonna adjust how the stick inputs from your controller affect the drone. And then you have filter settings next to that. So off the bat, just keep these the same. I wouldn't change anything. Next, we'll go to the receiver tab. So some setups will be pushing power to the receiver when it's plugged in via USB. This one isn't one of those, so I'm gonna have to plug a battery in, but this is why I set up the VTX beforehand so that this is just pushing out 25 milliwatts as opposed to 600 and overheating. So I'm gonna plug this in. And you'll also hear 
I, or not here, the second set of uh, ESC beeps. So that's because we haven't set up the motor protocol yet. So I'm gonna turn my controller on and I'm, I already have this receiver bound up to my controller, as you can see. Um, I'm not gonna go over linking the receiver to your controller because that's gonna vary depending on what kind of receiver and controller you have. If you need to learn how to hook up an ELRS receiver like this to your controller, I have a whole video of that and I'll leave that down in the description. So this receiver is already hooked up. We have the ports tab all set up so it knows um, that the receiver is on UART2. So once we're in the receivers tab, if you're not seeing any stick movement on here, you're gonna have to change a couple things. So make sure you have serial via UART selected. If you have a PPM receiver or a PWM, make sure you have that selected or SPI. Um, this is a ELRS receiver and this runs on the Crossfire protocol. So we're gonna select serial and then this is where you can select S bus. There's a whole bunch of different options on here. And like I said, it runs on the Crossfire protocol, so I'm gonna select Crossfire. And I'm gonna hit save and reboot. And typically, it's all messed up, but you can see stick input. Yes, so right now I'm moving the throttle up and it thinks that it's the roll. When I roll, it thinks it's the pitch, and when I pitch, it thinks it's throttle. The only one that works right is the yaw. So to fix this, go under channel map and change this from ATR or whatever it's on to a couple different options. I know that mine is T-A-E-R, one, two, three, four. And once I save this, it's gonna be fixed. So now throttle's throttle, yaw's yaw, pitch, roll, it's all right. And the switches work too. So just make sure everything looks good on here and we're all set in this menu. Next, we're gonna go to modes. And this is where you basically set up all the switches for your controller. So I'm gonna turn this off, add range. This is selected to auto. So when you move the switch on your controller, you're gonna see these move. And when it's in the on position, make sure you adjust these so that it's within the yellow bracket. And then off is out. So angle, I'm gonna turn angle mode on. This is on auto. It's gonna automatically detect the switch that I want. So I'm gonna have upper position be angle mode and we'll just do the beeper so that's on I'm gonna adjust this here and then hit save there's a whole bunch of different things that you can turn on but I'm just gonna do these for now and once that's saved you can just kind of move everything around and make sure that it's looking good this looks good Go to the motors tab and now we can check the direction of our motors so to do this you're going to need to select an esc motor protocol for this esc uh it's just running bl heli s so i'm just going to do d shot 300 if you have a deal if you have a bl heli 32 esc you can turn on bi-directional d shot you know, save reboot and now as you can see you can hear that second set of beeps and that's telling you that the ESCs are communicating with the flight controller. So I'm gonna go back onto the motors tab. So now to check the motor's direction, make sure you have all the props removed and we're gonna tick this little box on and I'm gonna move the master up just a little bit so that the motors are all spinning. So on the screen, you can see motors one, two, three, and four right here and motor one and four should be spinning clockwise and motors two and three should be spinning counterclockwise. So just kind of put your finger on it and you can feel which direction the motor is moving. This one's moving the right way, clockwise. This one should be spinning counterclockwise. Motor three should be spinning counterclockwise and motor four should be spinning. Oh, so motor four, motor four is actually spinning the wrong direction. So I have to reverse motor four because that's spinning counterclockwise but that's the only motor that I have to reverse. So to do that, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna go motor direction down here. I understand the risks, yep. And I'm gonna go, since I know that this motor is spinning the wrong way, I'm gonna do individually. If you if you just wanted to have Betaflight figure it out for you, you can hit the wizard and do that, but I'm gonna do individually. And motor four is the one that we need to reverse. So I'm gonna hit motor four and I'm gonna hit reverse and close. And that's it. So now, tick this on again 
and you can just do motor four. And now that's spinning clockwise, which is what we want. So now motors are all set. And since motors all, are all set, I'm gonna unplug the battery. Now, honestly, the only thing left to do is customize your OSD. So this is what you're gonna see in the goggles. Something that you can do is you can actually turn your goggles on and have the drone on while you're adjusting this and you'll be able to actually see where they sit on the screen while you're adjusting it. And if you don't do that, you could have say like this alert all the way up here and then when you put your goggles on, you might not even see this because this might be out of the field of view. So this is where you can basically just turn on the stats that you want on your screen. So I'm gonna do that now. This is kind of gonna just vary depending on how you want your screen to look. Um, but this is what I like mine to look like. You can also select the video format. I'm using NTSC, so I'm just gonna select NTSC, but you could have it on auto. You can select the measurements. So if you had a GPS, you would be able to see So if you had a GPS, you could turn uh, GPS speed on and you'll be able to actually see the speed in miles per hour, or you could see it in um, kilometers per hour. So I'm just gonna keep it on Imperial, even though I don't really have a GPS on here and it's not gonna make a difference, but that's what I like my OSD to look like. So that's pretty much it. Now your drone is ready to go. You have the arm switch set up, you have stick input and everything is good to go. Next, all you'll have to do is turn your goggles on and put it to the right channel and you should be all set. So if this video helped you out, make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and if I missed anything or if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I try to respond to as many as I can. How cool is this cable? Magnetic. I'll put a link to this in the description too.